Is it even possible to sightsee in the new normal? Stay tuned and find out. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And you definitely need to push past a little bit of fear if you're thinking of sightseeing out on the road. Paul and I in this video are going to give you the scoop of what it's like with the new normal to be out here sightseeing. One of the reasons I chose to do this RV life is to be able to go out and see all the stuff that, that this country has to offer. And unfortunately now, a lot of it is closed. Yeah. Many of the national parks are closed. Um, a lot of the state parks are closed. Stay tuned. We're going to talk about a few things that we have seen that we've been lucky enough to get into while everything has been shut down. Um, and we're going to give you some tips that may or may not help you. <laughs> well, we hope they'll help you. Yeah, we hope that we do. Yeah. <laughs> That's the whole point is we hope that our tips help you. And we have a gem of a museum to share with you. I mean, it really is a hidden treasure. Yeah, it was a it was a fun afternoon. Tip number one is sadly lower your expectations because the truth is you really are not going to see everything that you could see before the world changed. We were in the northern part of the Oregon coast near the town of Tillamook and there's a Tillamook cheese factory tour that you could take and it's free. Yeah, better yet. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's closed because of the COVID mess. Right. And you know what? Oregon coast is dotted with lighthouses and gosh be darned, we had a really hard time seeing them. The road to one of the main lighthouses in what Newport was closed. You couldn't even drive up to see it. And then there was the lighthouse in Cape Disappointment in Washington. Yeah, right? a real disappointment. Yeah. <laughs> it was because there's a hiking trail to it. They even closed the hiking trail so we couldn't see that. Yeah. So instead of the typical attractions, Definitely focus on doing more things that you'll be exploring by walking or driving. Many of the websites we have found that they, they're they not being updated. So you can't really trust what you see on the website. So call ahead and find out if they're open and what their hours are. They may have um, different hours than what's showing on, the, on, their, on their website. That's right. And they may be on such a reduced occupancy that they'll need you to reserve your spot just so that you can get in. And while you're on the phone, ask what's changed. Because when we went to see the Spruce Goose, right? The cafe was closed. And then we just went to a museum and there was a whole hands-on area that was also closed. And for those of you who don't know, um, the Spruce Goose is housed in a museum in McMinnville, Oregon. And the museum is called the Evergreen Museum, if you want to look it up online. Yeah, the Spruce Goose is what, the biggest airplane ever? The largest ever. airplane ever built, yes. Yeah, yeah. and worth seeing. And while you're on the phone, ask if they have any new regulations or policies. One place I called said you must leave your purse in the car. They don't want your credit card. They just want cash or check. Number four is be prepared to wear a mask. I mean, that is the new normal now. Just for the foreseeable future, if you're going to a public place, you're going to be expected to wear a mask. Yeah, in some places you'll visit, that will be the rule for the entire town or even the entire state. Tip number five is look for hidden gems. I bet in your hometown, there's probably a historic home or a factory museum or just some little small attraction that maybe you've overlooked. So now is the time to go see that. Yeah, the museum that we just visited yesterday is what I would describe as a hidden gem. And the way I found it is I was mapping our route. The road took a weird loop and I zoomed in to see what was going on there. And this museum popped up on Google Maps, um, the Northwest Carriage Museum. And uh, I thought, well, carriages, they've got wheels. That's <laughs> right up my alley. <laughs> Anything with transportation, Anything he's transportation there. Anything <laughs> transportation related, I'm gonna go and see it. Yeah. So we're gonna tell you some more about this museum and there's one more tip that we're gonna share with you after that. And it's probably the most important tip, wouldn't you say? It is. Well, I'm so excited to introduce Lori Bowman, who's the executive director of the Northwest Carriage Museum. Thank you, and I'm so glad you guys found us. You know, the museum's called a carriage museum, but we have so much more to offer than just carriages. But we do have a fabulous collection of 58 carriages and all sorts of artifacts that bring the carriages to life. If you have any interest at all in transportation, 
horses, history, the good old days, you need to visit the Northwest Carriage Museum. So our collection of 58 carriages goes from the gorgeous, elegant carriages that would have probably cost $1,500 back in the day and be driven by a driver to, uh, we did an addition in 2015 that we lovingly call the barn that houses the work vehicles, which is the stagecoach, the road coach, the chuck wagon. And we're very proud because our stagecoach, for example, was used in the old movie Virginia City with Humphrey Bogart and Errol Flynn. We actually have several that were used in the old movies. This one behind us was actually used in The Little Princess for Shirley Temple. We have one that was from Gone with the Wind. So these are all really fun carriages to get up close and personal and look at. And we're very proud that our stagecoach, we were actually contacted by the Travel Channel, and they came and did a, a little series on the uh, mysteries at the museum about Mary Fields. And Mary Fields was the first African-American female to drive a stagecoach for the U.S. Postal Service. So we have quite a collection of carriages. Well, one of the things that just so impressed me going through your whole museum is that you make it so accessible for everyone. You have something for the kids. There's always these cute little questions for the kids to think about and I like that you have the actual horses so you can see what it would be like to pull the carriage and the clothes and how tiny the people were 100 150 years ago people were a lot smaller we do have interpretive boards in front of all of them that mention fun facts or pictures that people do it does catch their eye and makes you think about it and the artifacts that we have like you get steamer trunks that are full of the tiny shoes that you talk about mm -hmm. we have uh, period clothing just all sorts of fun things we always say that there's something for everybody at the Northwest Carriage Museum. In 2019, we had over 10,000 visitors come through our museum and we were just thrilled and looking so forward to 2020 being an even bigger year and then hits COVID and obviously that affected everybody. Our museum had to close our doors on March 16th. We weren't able to reopen until June 16th. We reached out on social media. We did live Facebook tours. Um, my husband, Jerry Bowman, is a curator here and he does a really fascinating tour. We have a fabulous staff and I did not want to lose employees, so I will tell you that we spit shine clean all our carriages. I don't believe the museum's ever been this clean. We want everyone to know that we care about our visitors and my employees, so we do have safety guidelines in place following the Washington State guidelines. So we invite you to come get carried away at the Northwest Carriage Museum. We're open every day 10 to 4. And our last tip is appreciate who is open and the hard work they're doing to stay open. That's right. We ate at a restaurant that was reduced to just a few tables due to occupancy limits. So we realized we definitely need to tip more and appreciate all they're doing to keep it safe for us. And join the A-Team. Click on the subscribe button below and ring that bell so you get notifications for our new videos. And we'll see you in the next video.